How does America get its news? How does it know who or what to trust? Traditionally, the news has come from places like this. The Tribune Democrat of Western Pennsylvania still rolls off the machinery of a pre-digital age. You find conflicting opinions in its pages, a diversity of views. It offers its readers a shared public reality within which they can disagree, dispute and challenge each other. But does that guiding journalistic purpose also now belong to a fading pre-digital age? I think of the mission here as, as to both chronicle the life of a community and also to try to you know, help it move through its challenges. When I grew up and, and went to college, they, they always had us challenging ourselves to look at where the message came from. I, I don't know if people want to know that anymore. I think they just want to be, I'm here and, and this is what I think. And, and that, that's interesting to me, but it's also terrifying. Traditional journalism is losing its power to the internet and the echo chamber of social media. There are two Americas now, each listening to its own preferred news sources, two parallel public realities. What do we have here? Well, this is something that appeared frequently on social media. And it's a quote attributed to Donald Trump, and it says, People Magazine, 1998. And the quote is, if I were to run, I'd run as a Republican. They're the dumbest group of voters in the country. They believe anything on Fox News. It sounds very authentic, doesn't it? It, it sounds like the real Donald Trump. Yeah, it does. It, uh, but he never said this. It's, it's, a, it's a total made-up quote. In your face. Fake news has now infiltrated U.S. politics. The Internet is full of it. We're online. Online, made-up stories look like real ones, and they will confirm what you already believe. We have ignition. Strap in. This is a fake news website. Pope Francis shocks world, endorses Donald Trump for president, release a statement. And this was shared like a million times on social media. The debunking of that fake piece was shared 30,000 times. Are there also now two Britons, each with their own parallel truths? Remember this claim made by the campaign to leave the EU. This is what that bus looks like now. New livery, new colours, the £350 million a week for the NHS is gone, just as it's gone from the national discourse. Is this Britain's version of post-truth politics? We knew exactly who made the claim written on the side of this bus. They were challenged every day on television. There is still a shared public reality in British politics, a common square where news is generated and consumed. But it's gone in America, and it could go here too. The dangers to democracy are obvious. I think if you want to have a vision of the future, look to Russia, where actually one of the things under Vladimir Putin has been about creating a regime where no one can really know anything and, and keeping people in this kind of fog of uncertainty. Someone trying to create, a, create an atmosphere in which there are no experts, nobody can know anything, so you probably better let you know, a strong man kind of take in charge and, and govern. And that's not great for democracy, is it? Terrible, terrible for democracy and actually you know, terrible for journalism. But democracies also value freedom of speech, the right to say things others find offensive. Who in the new media landscape is to police what's valid and what's fake, what's true and what's post-truth? 2016 has given the question new urgency. Alan Little, BBC News.